This fifth clip summarizes some recent experiments on the role of prefrontal dopamine in visual attention. My name is Behrad Nodust and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Cell Biology and Neuroscience at Montana State University. Much of the research that I'm going to talk about was performed in Trin Moore's lab at Stanford where I was a postdoc there. As we know, prefrontal cortex is a core region in the control of cognitive function and is well positioned to do this control. It sends to and receives projections from virtually all sensory and motor areas and it's believed that PFC drives top-down control of cognitive functions by controlling signals within these areas via its reciprocal connections with them. Recent studies have found a role for the frontal eye field part of the PFC in the top-down control of attention. FEF, which is shown here in this lateral view of the macaque monkey brain, and it's sitting in front of the arcuate sulcus and is originally known for its role in control of eye movements. For example, electrical stimulation of sites within the FEF with currents in the order of microamperes, which we call it microstimulation, elicits fixed vector saccades to different parts of visual space. Moran and Fallah first showed the behavioral benefit of FEF activities in perception. They put a stimulating electrode into the FEF and defined the response field of the FEF site under a study based on the landing points of microstimulation of oxacards. They found that microstimulation of the FEF with currents less than the required threshold for evoking saccades, which we call it subthreshold stimulation, improves monkey's performance in detecting changes in contrast of visual stimuli when those stimuli appear within the response field of the FEF site under a study. Thus, FEF stimulation mimics the effects of spatial attention on behavior. Importantly, FEF is reciprocally connected with many extra straight visual areas in which many of the known signatures of attention are observed. For example, FEF neurons receive direct inputs from area V4 and project back to that area and Moran Armstrong showed that FEF microstimulation can induce signatures of attention in V4. They managed to find sites within these two areas that they have overlapping response field, meaning that when they microstimulate the FEF site, the evoked saccades would land within the response field of the V4 neuron that they are recording from. And they observed that subthreshold stimulation of the FEF site ca causes an increase in the firing rate of V4 neurons similar to what attention does. So FEF activation mimics behavioral and neuronal signatures of attention probably via its long-range connections with visual areas. In a search for neuromodulators involved in, the, in this prefrontal control of visual signals, we studied the role of dopamine signaling in the FEF. Some previous experiments, which I'm not going to discuss in detail, but are listed here in case you want to look them up, suggest that D1R antagonists increase persistent memory-related activity within PFC. Based on these results, we were interested in testing whether dopamine signaling in FEF would have an effect on visual signals in V4. We went about this by infusing small quantities of dopaminergic drug into the FEF, since the FEF controls eye movements, as previously discussed, we first wanted to check whether this drug infusion altered eye movements. To do this, we quantified the monkey's target selection preference using the double target task. In this task, monkey fixates on a fixation point. Then, when fixation point turns off, two targets appear on the screen with a small onset asynchrony, and monkey is free to choose either of these two targets. However, naturally, the monkey selects the target which appears first more frequently than the later one, Thus, we can assess animal tendency to select a target by measuring how long the monkey would wait for that target and by changing the temporal onset asynchrony between the two targets, we can plot the monkey's tendency for choosing between target 1 and target 2 as proportion of saccades to target 1. And as a measure of monkey's tendency, we define the point of equal selection as the uh, temporal onset asynchrony at which the monkey would choose two targets with equal probability. Notice that by this measure, a decrease in PES indicates a stronger tendency for choosing target one. And then we tested the effects of blocking FEFT one rs on target selection and the visual responses of V4 neurons. This injection, uh, the injection electrode is inserted into the uh, FEF and the response of V4 neurons are recorded with a recording electrode. 
when they are responding these two sites are responding to the same part of visual space in order to measure the selectivity of v4 neurons we use oriented bars for the visual stimuli here is the response of a neuron to a bar oriented at 45 degrees and 135 degrees and as you can see 45 degree stimulus evokes a bigger response and thus this neuron is selective for orientation next we measure the animal's initial tendency to choose target no, to choose saccade targets appearing inside the fef response field versus targets appearing outside of the FEFRF and this plot shows the point of equal selection is about 120 milliseconds which indicates that the monkey chose the two targets equally often when the RF target appeared 120 milliseconds sooner and we infuse one microliter of D1R antagonist into the FEF site which we assume it increases the persistent activity in FEF as you can see following the infusion the point of equal selection decreases to about 80 milliseconds and there is a left far shift in the curve indicating an increase in the monkey's tendency to choose the target in the FEF response field relative to the other target and lastly we measured the visual responses of the V4 neuron again in this example we can see that the increase in monkey's tendency to saccade to the FEFRF is accompanied by an increase in the V4 neuron response Importantly, the difference between the neurons' response to preferred and non-preferred stimuli also was also increased after FEF manipulation, thus making the neuron more selective for orientation. Then, based on this sample, we can say that following manipulation of D1R mediated activity within the FEF, we observed increase in psychotic target selection and an enhancement of visual responses of V4 neurons with spatially corresponding RFs. This was also what we observed when we increased number of experimental sessions. This scatter plot shows the point of equal selection in double target task for 21 experiments of D1R uh, antagonist infusion. As you can see, PES is decreased in almost all sessions, which means that the monkey is choosing the RF stimulus more often after infusion. This slide summarizes the effects of D1R manipulation in FEF on responses of V4 neurons. The arrow toward V v4 response field indicates the overlap between the response field of fef and v4 so for the population of recorded neurons with overlapping rfs with fef we observe a significant increase in the average response and stimulus selectivity of v4 neurons we also measured the fano factor a measure of response variability and found that after d1r manipulation this measure reduces in v4 neurons indicating an increase in the reliability of visual signaling within v4 to see if the observed V4 effects are especially confined or not, we infused the D1R antagonist into a non-overlapping FEF site. Now the affected FEF site is responding to a different part of the space than the V4 neuron, and after infusion we didn't find any significant change in any of our three measures, and these effects were all significantly different from what we observed for D1R manipulation on overlapping sites. Now we infused a D2R agonist as a control, which is expected to increase the saccade-related activity, but not persistent memory-related activity in FEF neurons. Similar to what has been observed with D1R mediated activity, we again observed a significant decrease in PES, indicating a greater tendency to choose RF targets. As you can see, the magnitude of D1R and D2R effects were pretty comparable. However, in spite of similar effects of D1Rs and D2Rs on double target task, D2Rs did not significantly change our measures of V4 neuronal responses, neither the average firing rate nor the selectivity and response variability. And importantly, all these three measures were significantly different from D1R effects. So as a summary, we found that local manipulation of D1R mediated activity within the FEF increased the probability that visual stimuli within the corresponding part of the space would be selected as stochastic targets. The D1R manipulation also increased the visual response magnitude, stimulus selectivity, and response reliability of V4 neurons. And this effect was spatially specific, meaning that no effect of, uh, uh, was observed at non-overlapping FEF V4 sites. Local manipulation of D2R mediated activity within FEF increased saccadic target selection as much as the D1R manipulation, however, it did not affect the visual activity of V4 neurons. 
Here is a high risk commodized model of how we believe FEFT1Rs and D2Rs are contributing to target selection and control of visual sig signals. Shown are two adjacent cortical columns within the FEF, each one representing different retinotopic parts of a space. Only a couple of pyramidal neurons and one gamergic neuron is shown, just for simplicity, for simplicity and only in supra and infragranular layers. Supragranular layers are where neurons with feedback projections to V4 are located, importantly between D1Rs and D2Rs, only D1Rs are expressed in supragranular layers, and D2Rs are mostly expressed in infragranular layers. Importantly, FEF neurons within infragranular layers project to superior colicus as and they tend to exhibit more prominent motor-related activity, such as presocotic bursts. Shown also are the diffuse dopaminergic inputs to the FEF from the ventral tegmental area. Following a local perturbation of D1R mediated activity, one possibility is that reciprocal connections between supraglenular FEF neurons and V4 neurons are strengthened and it increases the gain of visual signals in the retinotopically corresponding visual space. It also increases saccadic target selection, possibly via infragranular effects. Perturbation of D2R mediated activity influences infragranular FEF neurons and increases saccadic target selection without any effects on V4 neurons. Here, we have a cellular level mechanism by which a mechanism which is assumed to change the persistent activity within FEF, with, which I mean D1R mediated effects in uh, FEF, is shown to also affect the control of FEF on V4 responses. Thank you.